Hello, my name is Mordred Viking, and I'd like to welcome you to this rather glorious stream. This is something I was not expecting to be able to show you for quite a few months, but um, I can. So this is Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail, which is made by the same crew that did Ultimate General, the Civil War series, which you may have realized that I'm rather partial to. I have done quite extensive coverage of Civil War, and so I reached out to the developers, having heard that they've just released their closed alpha backers update, basically, where you can play as some of the naval stuff. And they gave me not only a code to the game, which I was mostly trying to get because I wanted to see what the game was like, but also permission to record it and show off gameplay footage, which is usually not the case for a closed alpha. Usually there's all kinds of NDAs and types of things like that that you have to sign. So, please note, this is a closed alpha. Many, 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 many things are missing. It's not balanced. There will be probably glug bugs and glitches and that type of thing. Although, I have to say, I've been particularly impressed with how stable this is. Like, I was playing it for two or three hours last night and didn't crash once, and there were basically no bugs that I could see. A couple of little niggling uh, balance issues, but, like, the game itself, very solid. Like, Huzzah! Huzzah. Larsman, thank you very much for the 14-month resubscription. Yay! This will be good. And also, I should give a shout-out to Don Bassos, who resubscribed earlier for 22 months. And also, Sam Free Appleby for 12 months. I don't know if you're still online. That happened to be like five hours ago. But I thought especially the 22-monther deserved a shout-out, because that's quite a long time. Anyway, yeah, this is Ultimate Ad uh, Admiral Age of Sail. As you may recognize from the title, this is naval orientated. This is uh, Era of the Tall Ships, the Age of Discovery, uh, like the 1700s until like early 18s, maybe. Um, so it should cover everything from like the Golden Age of Piracy, and that is definitely covered in this, like think Sydney's Pirates, through to War of Independence. And one of the campaigns that I am so excited to play is you can play in the War of Independence as the American Navy. You can play as John Paul Jones. So remember that completely bonkers game of European of Asalis that we did as the Americans where we basically won the War of Independence at sea, having defeated the uh, Royal Navy. Basically, you can do the same thing here. So I am very, very excited about that. Cold Steel! Woohoo! I'm hyped! Wasn't expecting this at all. Seems good. Yes, I agree. Well, that was an emote thing, but still, seems good. Um, so we are going to jump in. There are only two battles which are available at the moment. There's no campaign or anything like that. It's just the battles. And the Spanish gold is effectively the tutorial in the grand standards of the Civil War series or the grand, the, the, the ultimate series. It's really quite hard and I haven't actually succeeded at the tutorial yet. So I did the tutorial, got my schooled, then did Inconveniences, which is like the first mission, and got even more schooled. So yeah, it's pretty hard. It's definitely pretty hard. Um, so we're going to jump in do the tutorial. So effectively in this we are playing as the Royal Navy fighting against the Spanish Navy at, I think, the outset of the Napoleonic Wars. There is like an introduction like in most of the, well, in, like in uh, Civil War. So bear in mind and I will read through that. It was clear to the British that Spain would declare war soon after the arrival of the treasure ships from South America and the Admiralty knows where and when they will pass. So, there was no other option than to send adequate so uh, forces to seize the Spanish gold and make the inevitable war less comfortable for the Bourbon dynasty. Bourbon, not Bourbon. Afterward, this action was considered an act of piracy by Spain and a necessity of war by the United Kingdom. He, the Spanish Rear Admiral, José de Bustamante Higuera, wished to know if I considered the, French the Spanish ships as prizes and if I would hoist English colours on board of them when we arrived in England. I told him, my orders went to detaining them, that I had no orders to make prizes, and his own flag, the Spanish colours, should be hoisted when we met the fleet, or arrived in England, and that the rest would depend on the orders of the government. Captain Graham Moore's Journal, October 1804. So we start out with four ships, we have the Indefa in Indefagitable, which I am from now on going to be calling the Indy, and then they have four ships, and we'll talk a little bit more about the capabilities and everything of those vessels when we get in. On the morning of the 5th at 7 o'clock, the Medusa made signal for seeing four sails bearing west by south. I immediately threw out the signal for a general chase, and the squadron instantly made it all sail. We were at this time nine leagues southwest from Cape St. Mary. 
We soon perceived them to be a squadron of four large Spanish frigates. They formed in line of battle ahead and we drew near. The van ship bearing a Commodore's broad pennant, the next being the largest and a beautiful frigate, carried a rear admiral's flag. They carried a press of sail to the wind, steering in for Cadiz. Despite war isn't declared yet, looks their chief officer ordered to fight. We have to prevent arriving to Cadiz goods and money they carrying to Medea, so we have to seize she or sunk it off. This definitely will not be an easy run. No, you can say that again. So I'm just going to pause this real quick because Marshall has indeed reminded me that I did not do a Steam notification. I even had it copied in the thing. I just hadn't pressed enter yet because I hadn't pressed start in the OBS. Right, might as well cancel that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that, uh, Marshall. Thank you. And also, Sindrin throwing in a couple of bits as well. Thank you very much for that. Kill the Spanish. And we do have the right game selected. Okay, so this is a slight problem which I don't think I can fix. Ultimate Admiral doesn't actually exist as a game on Twitch yet. I have set it up to be the category. It is Ultimate Admiral Age of Sail. I've typed it in. But because the game doesn't actually exist in the Twitch archive of games which are, like, streamable... It's going to be showing up as Imperator, so I think I'm going to list this as Ultimate General Civil War instead, even though clearly it's not. Um, because I can't do Ultimate Admiral. I tried. <laughs> I posted it in and it didn't work. So, here we go. We have got the HMS Indefag Indef Indef Indefagitable. I don't know why this is such a hard name. And this is a very noteworthy ship for a reason I will get into in just a moment. Then we've got the HMS Medusa. The Indefagable is a much larger ship, by the way. It's a 350 crew. That's that number. Two star in terms of skill. And then down here, we can see it's a 48 gun. Well, this is a 40 gun frigate by the looks of things. That's definitely a frigate. This is a... Okay, I'm not even going to pretend that I know what the different classes are. Is it going to tell me? Fifth rate frigate. It is, down here. I hadn't actually clicked this button yet. That's interesting. And then this one is actually not going to tell me. But it is definitely a, probably a fourth rate, or maybe even a third rate frigate. Then we have the HMS Amphion, which is the same as the Medusa. And then the HMS Lively, which is also the same as the Medusa. And then up against us, we have the Farmer, which is a 280-gun frigate. I don't think we can click on them for information. We have the Medea, which is our objective, 330. So it's going to be a little bit smaller than the Indy. We've got the Santa Clara coming in with the 280. And then the Nuestra Señora de las Mercedes, which is a 267. There are a couple of stats and things on each of the uh, flags, which you'll notice. Uh, the names, and we'll, we'll talk about that as we get into it. So, HMS Indy. Why is this an important ship to me, anyway? There is an absolutely brilliant series of books called Hornblower, which is a really, really good series. They've also done a, like, BBC dramatized series of Hornblower, which is phenomenal. I very highly recommend that you check it out. And it's like, if you like the Sharp's Rifles series, it's basically Sharp, but on a ship. Same era, same type of like events and things going on, but it's, it's the naval Sharp is effectively what it is. And it is really, really good. And that all takes place, or at least his career starts, Midship and Hornblower, starts on the HMS Indy. So I very, very highly recommend you check it out. Go look it up on YouTube or something like that, and you'll see some clips. Like, it is a really good series, actually. So that was on the HMS Indy. Indy. HMS Indy. We're calling it that. Katie, speaking of England, looking forward to watching Lady... Lions. Oh, the Lady Lions getting crushed by us next week. Oh, is that for the Women's World Cup? I assume. Need to rewatch Hornblower. Yeah, me too. The Indefagitable must be indefeatable. Well, hopefully. So, the Indy I know from the games that I've played is really, really tough. It is a beast of a ship to take down. It also has a really good crew and they are pretty good at fighting. So in my first test game it was a disaster. Everything that could possibly go wrong went wrong. I must give you a quick notification that I am a dreadful admiral. I'm pretty good. I like the strategic level stuff of trade and interdiction and privateering and all that stuff. When it comes to the tactical command of ships I am terrible. <laughs> so things are not going to go right here. 
But the Indy is thankfully a pretty strong ship, and during my second test run, I did actually manage to take the Medea. Uh, we boarded it, we killed all the crew on it, we took it. The problem is, you then have to leave a prize crew behind. I didn't, because I needed my crew uh, still. So, battle went on, bang, 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 all fighting. Bearing in mind, the Medea at this point was ba basically undamaged. I'd basically, I I'd managed to split it away from the rest of their fleet and then boarded it. Then sank one of the other ships. I don't remember which one it was. It was probably the farmer, actually. It was sinking. Their crew, <laughs> abandoned ship, went onto the lifeboats, used the lifeboats to row to the Medea and then recruit the Medea. At this point, most of my fleet was either sinking or on the verge of sinking. And then suddenly the Medea, full strength, fully manned ship, back into the fray. And it's like, this is the target as well. And that's how I failed the second run. Closest I came though. Definitely the closest I came. Anyway, um, the ships, as you will see when you click on them, have a range. You can ch select different cannon types uh, for different ranges and different effects. The blue line here denotes their sails. The red lines, two of them, one for the right side, one for the left side, is the amount of armor on the ship. And then the yellow line is the hull. So basically you have to destroy all of the armor and then the hull starts going. And as soon as the hull starts going, it starts to sink bad times um what else do i need to say right so if, if we click on this we can see the ranges they do change with a different thing so round shot hits armor and hull chain shot hits sails and basically tries to slow them down or completely incapacitate them and then grape shot hits the crew the crew is the number as i mentioned before so the nuesta even though it's probably the same class as ship as the Santa Clara has a smaller crew right now um, you can tell ships to follow each other so you'll notice right now they're all chained together so any orders that I give to the Indy the others will then try to follow in the chain you can also set an AI on or off uh, which will basically tell the AI to take control so I can say to the Indy attack that ship and you'll notice that we get a little symbol here saying attack and then AI that little yellow thing means the AI is going to take control. We'll start sailing and we'll start using the Indy to attack and hopefully sink the farmer. The one downside which I will have to level to this system at the moment is you cannot tell them which kind of shot to fire. They will always default to cannon, uh, to, to round shot. Huzzah! So if you want to actually aim for the sails or aim for the crew, you will have to do it for yourself. But if you're perfectly happy with just sinking the ships, then setting it to AI is probably a good idea. And in fact, if I'm being very honest, I will probably set these three to AI. Again, because I am not very good at fighting. So these three will probably be paired off against three of those. I will take control of the Indy, most likely to try and take out the Medea. Um, I will probably micro the AI a little bit to try and split the Medea away from the rest of their squadron so that I can try and get a boarding on. Um, but that is, yeah, that, that, that's that's the plan. Whether that plan lasts is another matter. Fred, another month closer to the Golden Horns. Eight months of Twitch Prime. Thank you very much. I've been off more than I've been watching, so congrats on getting partner. You deserve it. Keep up the good work. For the profits. Thank you very, very much, Fred. I appreciate that. Thank you. Um, so we've talked about how many guns the ships are, so it's a 48, 40, 40, 40. There are ship stats here which I had not actually seen before. So the Indy has more stamina, more morale. It actually has poorer gunnery. Oh, the Lively is actually my best gunship. Interesting. Okay, I did not know that. The Indy is good at efficiency and good at sailing, so the Indy is probably going to be the most damaging along with the Lively. It is also the best at boarding, and in fact the Amphion is downright dreadful at boarding. So the Amphion is the weakest ship of the fleet. So this is one that we is, is a little bit expendable, the others not so much, particularly the Indy and the Lively. Good to know, because I definitely was not using the ships that way previously. Uh, we can also see what kind of guns they have, so the Indy has 26 regular cannons and 22 I guess cannonades. Cannonades typically were used against infantry and then cannons were used against ships and we can see here the ranges are different so the cannons will only fire at the very long range and then the cannonades will be coming in closer range and they will be used to aim at crew although they do also seem to do more damage. We can see the max speed is 9.9 .9. these guys actually move slower than the fifth rate okay 
and then turning, the fifth rate's turning is a lot poorer than these. So these are very maneuverable, though a little slower. This one is failing, uh, sailing straight with the wind, running with the wind, it's a lot quicker. And that leads me very nicely to the next section, which is the wind. The wind matters a lot. And this game actually models some mechanics I've never seen modeled in a game before. So the wind is currently uh, easterly, blowing from the west to the east, and we're running with the wind. So we're going to be very, very quick. These guys will be steering across the wind, so they'll be okay, but they're going to struggle a little bit to turn, while we can turn rather more easily. So if we do do like a 180, we'll then be going against the wind, and we'll basically just stop. When you are turning, your ship will, like say it's flat normally and it turns to the left, well actually that way, I, I forget my camera's mirrored, your ship will actually start listing. This means that any guns on the tall end will actually shoot further, and then any guns on the short end will shoot less far, and the firing arcs will change to um, reflect that. Also, if you're sailing crosswind, and say we were sailing towards the enemy ships right now, our left side shots would go further because they're flying with the wind, while the right side or the port side would say, no, is that starboard? There's a little port left. Starboard side would fire less far. So there's some serious mechanics and physics coming into the way that your ships actually function during a fight. I will probably forget that within about five seconds of the game starting. Like I said, I am bad at naval games. I am good at strategic naval, terrible at tactical. So yeah. Anyway, the objective is we need to try and take the Medea. So what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to get the Medusa to attack that. I'm going to get the Amphion to attack that and we'll set both of you to AI we'll get the lively to attack you and then the indie to attack you we're actually going to leave no that's silly we're, we're going to get both of you to attack the Medea and we're going to try and board the Medea as quickly as we can yes okay so one other thing that we do need to talk about is the setting of your sails full sail uh, 75, half, 25, 0. With this one you stop, and you can also throw down your anchor to stop that way. Um, I think, I suspect, I don't know for sure if this is modelled, but I think it probably is. If you have full sail and you're being hit by chain, you're probably going to lose more sails. Whereas if you have lower sails or no sails up at all, then you'll probably take less damage. Not confirmed. I'm guessing. Like, if they're modeling the cannon that effectively, then they're probably doing the sails that effectively. So when you're sailing towards the enemy, you probably want to have full sheet. Well, if you're actually close, you probably want to have less. It does take time to change your sails. It is not instant, like in many other games. For example, Patrician. The sails take time, and you will actually see the sails furl and unfurl over time. I don't know if you can see, like, crewmen scuttling around. You can see the marines. The marines are modeled, and they are on the... Uh, on the deck, and you can also see we have a couple of guns uh, on the deck. I think those are all um, animated. And the Marines definitely are, because the Marines will start popping shots off at each other when they're in range. What a Viking bad at naval combat? I call shenanigans. This Viking's good at raiding. The naval stuff I leave to the shipmaster. I'm the Jarl, I'm not the captain. Ooh, your naval skills are about as good as my cavalry skills. I strongly suspect, and this is going to be a very controversial stance, I very strongly suspect that my cavalry skills are better than my naval skills. Anyway, an Englishman can't go to war without having some tea first. So, first of all, we pour the tea. Then, we're going to go and attack them. I think that's enough of a, a spiel and a talk here about now. Oh yeah, space doesn't work. So we're going to go normal speed. Normal speed is relatively slow. I will tend to go onto this speed. And also, this is the tutorial, so we'll, we'll talk through this. The info circle around the hull. Right, I've got to talk about that. Sailing points related to the wind directions, front, side, and rear armor. Um, side guns. The bars of the ship is your sail condition, your armor condition, hull condition. So we already talked about that. The other thing on this... HUD is how good you are at sailing at the various points of the wind and then the little pips are how many cannons are loaded and out of action. You can lose guns by being shot at. Uh, yeah, that's cool. 
So let's just pause this for a real second so we can click on this. So we can see here that we are really good at running before the wind. We're moderately good running. And I think there is going to be like a breakdown of exactly where the winds are of this one. Not great that way. Pretty bad against the wind. And then we're completely stationary sailing into the wind. And this circle, I think, like stays there. Oh, sorry, I should give you some orders. Right, the orders. Um, you can give a couple of orders. You can tell your ship where to move just by doing that, and they will try to do that. You can also click and hold and then do the squiggly line, just like in Ultimate General, if you want to be a little bit more precise in your maneuvers. You can also double right click, which means they'll sail up to that point, then throw down their anchors and stop. So if you just single right click, you'll see the arrow, they'll sail to this point and then continue on in that direction. Well, if you double click, they'll sail to that point and stop. Um, beat yourself, they won't be prepared for it. Funny story. One of their ships got beached on this island and was basically taken out of the fight. Then two of my ships tried to cross him, sailed in here, then got caught in this shallow area. So shallow water is a thing. You need to be very careful of it. So like sailing across this, this is all shallow and your ship will run into problems if you sail into there. So you do kind of need to babysit the AI a little bit because they are not the best at avoiding that. <laughs> Popcorn, but it's stale. Oh dear. Did they have life preservers back then? If they didn't, you can find technology to make them. I doubt it, and I doubt it. Their idea of a life preserver is a second ship. Right. So I kind of want to force them to sail into the wind. So we're going to sail a little bit towards them, I think. And then once we are definitely in range, we will swing around and we'll start shooting them. Because we are the Royal Navy, and this is going to be a very stereotypical approach but I suspect we're better at shooting than they are so we may well try to engage them at long range because last time I tried to go close range and brawl didn't work particularly well all right ship control adjust the sails to 0 25 50 75 100 percent by selecting the proper sail setting which you can see down here check always the wind direction indicated by the golden arrow in the compass or by the flags of the ship, so you can actually see the flags are flowing the correct way um, before you set a course for your ships. Here we go. Downwind, running, broad reach, good speed, beam reach, something reach. Well, let me go back to that. Oh, can't see it anymore. A ship turning upwind, the wind will inevitably stop sailing and be finally blown backwards. Circle around the ship indicates with different colors the various sailing points and the expected sailing speed according to the uh, general direction of the wind. Anchor. To stop a ship, select anchor. Previous course is removed. Select zero sails. Previous course remains active. If set again, the ship will continue following the previous course. So the anchor is basically a cancel actions. And then to select a group of your ships, sail in a line formation. Select a grip, uh, select a ship, then right click on the next ship to follow it. So select this one, then right click on him. You can see there's a little plus by the cursor. He will then follow. As I showed you, the ships were chained together like that. Uh, you can also select them down here. That That's all that's saying. Do I miss part of this? No. I think we already talked about that. So we are probably in range. So we're going to cross the T here. We're going to start swinging around, bringing the broadside to bear. Unfortunately, they're coming straight at us, so we're not going to have a great target to shoot at. But we'll still give them hell. And actually, I think I want you to try and disable them. Watch that one was the other side. So we're going to continue sailing across them. AI is deciding to go basically straight at them. And you... Right, I sent you after him as well. I need to remember who I actually told you lot to fire at. So if they come this way, they're actually sailing against the wind, so we're going to have the speed advantage here. So wait for it. Their prowl guns are firing at us. That's fine, they don't have very many prowl guns. Here goes the chain shots. Doing a bit of damage to the sails. Actually a fair amount of damage to their sails. Oh, I like this. Battle! When the enemy is found in range and inside the attack sector, ships auto engage. In the upper screen appears icons with the amount and sort of damage. Double left click on the target to enter its aim zone zoom mode. Yes, I hadn't shown you that yet. Left click on the specific element to be targeted, then right click to exit the zoom mode. So if we click on you, double left click on him, we can actually say, I want you to shoot at that sail. Oops. 
I thought you could. Boarding. When the enemy is found in range and inside the attack sector, ships auto-engage. In the upper screen appears icons of the amount and sort of damage. Oh, over here. Yes, so when we fire, little pop-ups will appear over here showing us what we've done. And then that's talking about the shootiness again. Maybe? Oh, there we go. I think we just couldn't see it. So we're going to right-click. And then, actually, I'm going to have you lot do the same thing. I'm going to turn your AI off. Unfortunately, we're sailing you into a really bad position, so let's sail straight between them. You turn a little bit. So long as we stay ahead of them, we'll have the wind on our side. I'm going to try and disable them if we can. That's the wrong type. I do kind of wish that the chain shot was second, so it's long range, mid range, short range. Well, unfortunately, it doesn't work that way. We're firing a couple of the Medea. We would very much like to take the Medea out if we can. Like, if we can demobilize the Medea and take them out of the fight completely, that would be pretty amazing. So we'll have you swinging around now. Because we want to keep these two out of the fight if we can. So if we can single these two out on their own, that would be great. Well, you're going to continue just sailing straight in front of them. And then the Lively, which is actually my best gun. You come over this way. Does the game reflect the time necess necessary to retrieve the anchor once it's dropped? Don't know. Haven't actually dropped anchor before. Our guns continue to fire at us. So we have no guns at the back, I don't think. There's not a huge amount we can do that. And the Amphion is our weakest ship. So... I may actually send the Amphion to go and take these two out of the fight. We're just going to let them brawl with the Amphion. You're swinging around and you can see he's listing, so his range is greater. I actually hit our own ship a few times here. Got a few shots, and because he's listing, his fire arc should also be higher. And we're going to reduce your speed a bit because you are getting ahead of them because we're sailing with the wind. I wish you would target him as a matter of priority. Okay, we're going to go straight between these two with the Amphion. Meanwhile, the Lively is going to continue sailing. And we're just going to reduce your sails to half. We're just going to keep rolling them. These are Royal Navy, yes. So the farmer's definitely having a good old go at us, but the farmer's shooting, I think, mainly at my hull. We're pretty well armoured. The farm is now caught between two of my ships here. Whoa. Don't actually know if ramming happens. Ramming happens. Okay. Oh, and also if we zoom in, we see that the marines uh, should be shooting at each other. What's your troop numbers? You're really bad at boarding, aren't you? You are. So definitely don't want you boarding. 